Hello. Hello. Hello, Tim. Um, welcome to my house. Uh, hello, computer music people. Uh, I'm going to show you a few tip, tips, the top tips of the trade, and uh, how to mash up the brakes, stuff like that, um, and uh, how easy it is to write a match tune. So let's go. Come on. Then um, into here. Then um, to found a break. Obviously, I'm going to cut it to the right size. It's all going to be cut down a bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I'm dividing it. Um, uh, obviously, you can divide it into fours or eights or sixteens. Um, and then in this in this window here, we've got the original grade. And then uh, you can lock different slices, so you wanted to keep the first bass drum, so you can lock that, so, so you don't want it to start on a, on a high hat or something. So, and then as you kind of hit random, <laughs> doesn't matter how many times that. Um, <laughs> obviously that sounds really crappy, um, so what you need to do is make sure that your brakes are, <laughs> your brakes in time, but why I use this? Yeah, this is this is Acid Pro, which I do uh, do most of my sequencing to actually make the whole structure of the track. Um, this this program, Beat Zero XP Creator, this is what I've used to uh, like mash up the brakes along with Audio Mulch, um, which are these, these all these software is quite cheap in comparison to you know, the Cubase and Logic. But it doesn't mean it's, it doesn't mean it's, uh, it's cheap, you know, it's, it's cheap sound. Well, I'm trying, because obviously the, the beat wasn't quite in time, so uh, now I'm going to try and get the beat um, in time. So when I rearrange it in, uh, in Beat Creator, it will sound, sound a bit better than it did just did. So you, you go to track properties, you go to stretch and beat map, beat map wizard, which is basically you can get um, any any tune, whether it's you know like a, an MP3 or or a WAV or you know whatever, um, uh, AIF file, and uh, you've got metronome. It's pretty simple really, and then it. Um, beat maps the whole track, so so you can put stuff on top of each other easily, which is kind of quite a big part of uh, yeah, <laughs> my music. Sounds very boring compared to uh, what you'd hear in a slamming jungle tune or you know, a square pusher tune or all that type of stuff. So, uh, what I'll do, I'll just check it. Through. I'll start 
start with um, mashing it up a bit in that acid and then I'll move over to the other programs I use. Uh, so we're going to, this time we're going to the chopper page, which is very useful for extracting parts of parts of the beat easily in acid. Uh, I'd usually use like recycle or beat creator to do this, but um, you know, if I just wanna if I just wanna use acid, it's easier. So there's the snare, it's as easy as selecting the snare and then just drag it in and it saves it as the as the snare, so we've got the sat in. Say, and this means that uh, you can do all the mad uh, snare uh, pitching w without it being beat mapped and sounding crap. Um, so it's a one shot now um, rather than being a loop. So, um, so, so there's the snare, we just, we just get rid of that one. And then you can pitch with with the uh, uh, plus and minus one as easy as that. So it's kind of four, and um, then you can get that uh, jungles kind of sound. Obviously, you'd spend a bit more time, uh, you know, um, tuning the beat to make it uh, to make it to your own preference, you know. So I'd usually spend maybe you know, an hour, half an hour, an hour, about with it. Um, but for this, because it's um, because I'm just showing you, I'm just going to render it like this. So I usually. Usually write the BPM within the track title, which helps if you're using certain programs, like uh, um, because then you don't have to think what well, you know what's the tempo. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So it's Fever Amen. Uh, it says Faber Amen, but you know. Uh, so that's rendered. Um, so next up, you can take it into this program, uh, which is. Zero X Speed Creator, which is very cheap to purchase and very useful. Um, yeah, I'm not used to doing this on camera. Now, pressing the A button uh, will take you to the rearrange page. Now, the beat's cut up by region, um, and uh, Zero X automatically finds the regions for you. Um, lots of times it's not actually correct. Um, this time it looks pretty good. But, you know, you have to have, to have a go in it, see if it sounds good. If it doesn't, then change some of the regions. So rearrange the brakes uh, just by pressing round, simply by pressing round, or you can just move them around yourself. 
So if, you, if you're not into pressing random, if you think that's a cop-out way to do it, then do it by hand if you want, but I'm, I'm more into just pressing this. So. <laughs> So that sounds alright, but um, it sounds a bit, a bit everywhere. So I'm going to quantize, and I'm using it um, events instead. And not, I'm not using events. I'm using uh, uh, eight bars. So you hear the eight bars. Picking on the effects processor, which will affect each one. So see if it sounds alright. <laughs> for 16 instead because it's quite a fast beat so <coughs> so now it's chopped up obviously you can see it's quite on on beat and stuff so we're going to press a again see what happens um, uh, this this button here will lock any slice so i'm going to lock the bass drum because i want the the beat to always start with the bass drum um, at the moment so, so that's the original so I think that sounds pretty good. Um, you know, it's a variation of what I made before. So that's what I use this pro program to do. Uh, essentially, to make variations of beats that I'm making acid. Um, so I, I, you press save loop as. So um, I just name that number two. And then you just press around them again. And, and you know, make make as many as you want. I usually go for four. So there's uh, four variations of that beat. Um, next, next up, um, to make the beat a bit, bit more crazy, um, we're going to go for uh, using audio mulch. Uh, now, I'll just take you from the beginning in this to show you what, a bit more about what it's about. Uh, so, so this is the basic screen. Um, and you just create your own loop players, file players, stuff like that. Um, I'm, go I'm just going to go for a loop player. Uh, and so after, so you've got all your effects. Um, here, so. We're going to be using some of these. Uh, Some of these generic uh, beat slices, but they, 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 do, they do the job if you use them, if you don't overuse them. So, this is where it becomes useful because I said it was 98, now I know. So, when I'm in, uh, when I'm in audio mulch, I can just, just press 98. And then you're changing the bars to, I think it's four or two, I think. Not four, and it's two. So, obviously, that's sounding a bit more mashed up uh, with these plugins. So what I'm doing now um, is uh, is uh, saving from the sound out. So it's essentially just recording what I'm doing in uh, audio mulch. So let's call that audio mulch mash mix. And um, now I'm using my Fader Fox controllers. So you can um, be a bit more intuitive with 
what's being mashed up. Yeah, to control various things on the plugins. Usually, I, I put a simple filter, um, which can sound good for the jungle sound. Um, you know, delays, reverb, you know, anything really. If you haven't used audio mocks, it's very easy. Um, just like Ableton, you know, to set the controllers. So, um, so yeah, we're in audio box. Uh, just using a standard MIDI controller, you know, like any MIDI controller will do. I've got a Fader Fox uh, one, which I like. Uh, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to the transfer plugin and uh, going to parameter modulation. And basically, this is just to assign sliders, blobs, um, joysticks to to uh, different to different uh, faders on on the actual plugin. So here we're going to go for using the buffer size, and I'll just use I'll use this crossfader for that. So that's assigned. So, um, if I haven't explained this already, what's going on here? We've got the loop player, which I put the B in. Um, chain to that, you just make your own chains, just like in Reactor or Max MSP, whatever. Um, and I'm linking it to a plugin, plugins you just find here, or there, in bit one. And then you just link together as many as you want. You can literally do, you know, fill up this whole this whole space here, which is uh, somewhere friends do, uh, you know, a crazy, crazy setup. Um, yeah, so link this to this. <laughs> Plugins, um, uh, link them all up, and just play around with them. Link everything to the controllers, um, and you just just about have fun. Um, and then uh, while you're having that fun, you just press record. And then afterwards, yeah, you can import it into you know like Acid or Logic or Cubase or whatever you want, and um, and then take the best bits and craft it into something which is your own. And not just something that's randomly generated, um, which is uh, one of the things that people think about, you know, beat uh, mashing software. That it's, a, you know, you just press random and it, there you go, you're done, you're, you're uh, the next Venetian snares or whatever. But um, I think it's more, you know, what you do after it and the ideas that you have. Um, so anyway, I'm going to just play about with some stuff and it's recording now, so.
this is really good because you do the you can get the gate, which makes it obviously all the beats separate um, a lot more. Which you can get instead of it just being a big wall of amens, uh, you can add it a bit more minimal. And, uh, I'm just gonna reload this so we we'll cut this bit out. <laughs> So um, on this Steve Lou bitch, which I guess most of you will probably know, and uh, you probably, if you don't, then download it because it's weeks worth of fun, um, especially if you're hungover and can't um, hunt together a beat. <laughs> uh, right, so we're going to once again we're going to assign the MIDI controller to uh, assign the MIDI controller to some of these knobs. So I'm going to go for the envelopes. So here we go. Nice and easy to do that. Um, so we start over. Here. then uh, my brain started to think, oh, I could do something good with that. So I'm going to just shut down audio much for now. Um, there's some other functions I'll show you in, in just a second once I've remade some other beats to go with our original uh, uh, Saturday Night Fever uh, thing that we um, so, so now I'll just uh, open up Open up this file that we just recorded in audio mulch. So it's the mash mix, and if I set it to 98, so this is the whole. It's the whole point about renaming your files with the BPM in it, because uh, now I don't have to have it as a beat, uh, as a beat mapped file. Um, which the advantage of this is. That, that I can pitch shift and it will sound good and not um, not crap because uh, lots of the when you like uh, when you pitch shift with a B-batch file sometimes it, uh, the sound quality lessens so I, I prefer to do it as a one shot but I can just literally drag this about holding down the alt key uh, the left hand button on the mouse, you just drag the file out. So literally, uh, you, know, you, can, you can find the beat. So there it is. It's a little bit quiet. But it's a bit, so, it's a bit, yeah. so you just drag it about trying to find the uh, start of the first, first beat. So, so then just using the S S button that's another shortcut, you can slice the beat into bits. Huh? Are you busy? Uh yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Andy just came say hello. Hi, 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 Andy. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 This is uh, C Facts and Chevron. We're going to be aciding it up downstairs. Um, so here we go. Um, <clears throat> I'm just slicing the beats using the S key for this. Let's see where the marks are. 
Um, and now I'm just going to mess about and see what happens. Um, I'm producing. Sounds it? I might be working a bit fast. Um, all I'm doing here is using the plus and minus key, they're essential if you're doing like uh, this, you know, pitch shifting stuff, and it's a it's quick and easy way to do it rather than um, going and clicking on it. Is um, just in the in the track EQ effects kind of bit. Uh, I'll just get a, some kind of a, a reverb. So I'm just going to use room verb. Um, now you right clicking on the track and inserting envelope, and, uh, uh, which is I'm going to put effects one, which is the verb. Now it's pretty much like a just all, I'm just automating the effect when it turns on, when it turns off. So, so you get a little bit more there.
so we've done something there, and uh, we've used we've used uh, parts of the jam I had in audio mulch and made another new beat. So it's not it's not perfect, uh, you know, but uh, I'm fairly happy with it as another thing to mash up. So we're gonna render it again, and this time still keeping the 98 BPM. With something else like that. Um, now we will we'll put this uh, back into back into the creator. We're doing a similar process to what we're doing. We were doing earlier, basically. We've rend we've just rendered the loop, uh, made out the jams we've had, um, and the uh, beats we made in here earlier. We're putting it back into here again. So we're in effect processing it for a second time in this program. Sometimes, uh, sometimes when I'm in here, I, I'm, in, you know, I'm interested to hear it was like a little bit faster. <laughs> So I mean, it's not you know. This is something that I play around with. You know, maybe it's just better slow. Maybe it's yeah, good faster. So you know, then we just keep randoming. <laughs> We've just got a we've just got a break, so now we're gonna uh, uh, find another sound, something a bit more interesting. Um, it's a break, so it's okay. yeah. um, break, breaks like the think break have a have a little vocal noise at the start, but obviously you know when people sample, they're probably like, oh, we don't I don't want that sound, and I just want a break. But in effect, it. Uh, actually made for more interesting breaks because you get a bit more of an accent to it. So um, we need something a bit more random. Uh, Fronte and teacher percussion. Um, and it's got the wrong record in, so you go for this one, this is uh, television's greatest hit, so not so good on that. <laughs> So also I found uh, 
that sound, which might just sound like a record scratching, but it's very good uh, use it in breaks before to make it sound more real, like some mad uh, pillhead jungleist mixing. So we do the so as scratches um, there. We have we we'll open up. A bit of that in here. Um, yeah, uh, just make sure that's a one shot, not a loop. Um, and then we'll try putting that somewhere in this, this other bit I've done. This other bit I made earlier. Sometimes start from a like a preset and then I'll just twiddle all the knobs um, as I go. Um, and the good thing you can just pitch the MIDI file like this. And So, 
literally, literally go, kind of just going by. This one's already beat match because I've remixed it already. On my new album. <laughs> scratching my balls, like, yeah, trying to think what else I could put on it and how many <laughs> tracks I could put on it. Um, right, next up we're just going to find a bass drum because usually my tracks end up going into some gather frenzy so i uh, just going to use these ones now. Um, so there's one. It contains an illegal sample loop apparently. Um, so we've got this, and what I'm going to do is make, well, when I open two or three, I'm going to put one quite low and one quite uh, high and one more in the mid. Um, I'm just going to use the sound, the soundboard EQ um, for this because I can't get the other one to work. Because computers have problems sometimes, as we all know. Um, so I'm going to go to. Do a different 
one. Um, and yeah, maybe just do a quick do a, do a reverse as well. Control being then loop loops. Uh, um, essentially, gather is just that. <laughs> but it's good to put, you know, even nice nifty filters and stuff in it, which I'll show you in a moment. got something there anyway, that's like a gather bit. Jungle, my uh, drum and bass set or a reggae, reggae set. Uh, 
we're going into the process page and I'm just going to put on a band pass filter. So you get a bit more of a sort of hellfish style breakdown and we're just going to save some versions of that. So the filtered version of this. So. Um, we'll press random a few times. Free, so we've got some versions of that. Um, in the meantime,
Uh, we've got the original gambit. Just going to cut in bits of the other one we've just made an audio notch. We're just deleting bits where control lets in.